Hey, howdy, you guys. Well, I was listening to myself. I'm, I'm making another video for you. And um, it's also part of the kind of questioning that's going on about where these white robe guys come from. Where's those guys and stuff like that? And it comes from Revelations, Revelations chapter 7. All right. There's only 17 in here. And I thought I could talk you into going through it real quick with me if you'd like. Uh, and, uh, well, even if you don't, I'm going to do it anyways. Okay. But in the story, we get mentioned of the 144,000. All right. And you'll find that what they are, these are all these backup men that come. Um, these, this is the uh, 1,200 of all of these brothers. Okay. Once you add all of those things up. You know, I think there's three, six, nine, yeah, there's 12. When you get them all together, this is what it adds up to. And so um, when we are, when we're trying to read our Bibles by the, by the, uh, by the Spirit, we break it down into this four businesses here. And... When we get it all right, all, all pulled, then we then do we read the Bible. And so what we'll find this time around is that it's really beautiful and that the 144,000 show ups over here. But all of the brethren, which is two, which is God's creation, are, are, are actually brought together in threes, which is, the threes actually would be, you know, you're trying to get everybody on board. So um, all the guys come together. So five, six, seven, and eight on this particular part, you're going to get the, get the, the bringing together of the, the brethren. All right. Because that's God's creation is his, uh, the mind, the skin, you know, the skin that is the, the, and so you, you, it it's it's the joining of two mo mother and father this idea okay so when everybody is in accord and all are going in the right direction it's the same as the story when when Joseph tells the dream that he had had that all of his brothers were going to bow down before him and worship him and so, this is what sparks off the feud between them and he, because they're not going to have any of that. But, you know, but this was a dream, and this is what happens in the dream. So if you were to understand that the, these are the tribe of Israel, that they would represent the four different places on our body, that they would represent the four different places of us, all right, and they're split in threes, and of course, these are all. This is the, the tribe of this one, and the tribe of that one, and the tribe of this one, and they're all all in order now. And and they and then they represent this this uh, this beautiful thing that's coming from the east, right? It's just a beautiful, you know. If you're going to believe in this as an outside thing, this is where your fear comes in. But you're also this is where your salvation. This is where you think all the good stuff's coming from. And it is, but, you know, it's nothing scary. It's a revelations about someone opening their eyes. Like, I teach you how to, to take away the blindness from you, all right? And the dumbness, too, because it teach you how to understand and how to hear this, all right? So we have to get our ear into it, you know? But uh, what I did was I took the Revelation 7, and 7 is the Lord's Day. This is the day of the Lord. This is a good thing. And this is where you get that rest and you get taken care of. This is, and it goes on for the rest of ever, you know. So look, we got four worlds out of it. And of course that we got one, two, three, four. Remember one is about God. Two is about his creation. So this is where the brethren, the, the mind, he's talking about the mind. And the mind is the four and twenty elders in these stories, all right, which is the zodiac, the tribes of Israel, the sons of Jacob, all right, they're all in here lying in, and they're ready to get.
put together right down here in the not in number three. Three is a combination of God and his people. And four winds up being, you know, uh, what happens, okay? And five is the result. Five, it's interesting how the little guy that's left over on the end is the result in these stories. A lot of times it goes one and two, or there's one, two, and three, or it goes up, tells us all another world. But a good number of time we've been left something. And this is about the body. So it says, so this is about the body, and this number here is eight. It's about control. So when we get to the end of the story, this is the anchor device right there that that uh, is would be like the the snare. That's what eight is. Eight is a control number. So if if you were set free, then this would be like you know like this belongs to God now, you know, and it clamps shut and it's now and it's solidifies to where no one could ever change this. But in when you're in the beginning stages, you're looking for the change. And so this eight down here uh, could be a snare also that catches you and holds on to you, you know, which holds you in your place. So that's eight, a control. I got you. So does the devil got you or does does God have you? <laughs> All right. So. Uh, so I thought we would read through this here and have some fun with it because this 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 is a short one. All right. It's real short and we should be able to go through it super fast. All right. So it's Revelations chapter seven. OK. And we will. We'll just keep going. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor any tree. All right. The earth, nor sea, nor any tree. We're always in this situation where they're calling us a tree over on this side. All right. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and sea. Earth and sea. Remember, this is the first and second beast. Before you hurt them, before you do this, saying, hurt not the earth, nor the sea, nor any tree till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Let's make sure that we got this going on first before we kill anything, before we get rid of what's going on, what was in the past. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed and 144,000 tribes, the children of Israel. All right, so there's four. It's been a long time since we heard that number, but it used to be paired with the Son of Man, 666, the other nine. This is the left side, and she is the right side. And we're often told and encouraged to toss our nets over to the right side of the boat, all right? Where we we'll draw up 153 fish, and we get nine out of it, with a nine, with a right-hand reference, all right? All right, so uh, in other stories, oh, let's just keep going. Of the tribe of Judah, there were 12,000. From the tribe of Reuben, there were sealed 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, they were sealed 12,000. So from the first businesses, 12,000, all those 12,000, you keep adding them up because we need that 144,000, okay? Number six, of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000, and Nephilim 12,000, Manhas 12,000. All of those are threes. Everybody's lining up. Number seven, the tribe of Simon, tribe of Levi, tribe of Ishkar. Number eight, tribe of Zablon, Joseph, and Benjamin. Oh, these are beautiful. Remember, Benjamin is the is uh, was Rachel's last child that was born to him, born to her. All right, it wasn't a Benjamin. I think it was. 
That's a beautiful thing. All right. Anyways, uh, no, and Joseph. I think Joseph. I'm not sure which one it is. I'll have to go and check it out. But anyways, uh, it's going to show up over here because this is a beautiful place. This is from heaven. All right. That's heaven. All right. And so we get a whole new batch. Now, after all of this, I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples, tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes, with palms in their hands. This is number nine. Where are we at right here? So someone's coming. All right. Number 10. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to the, to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. Number 11. And all the angels stood round and about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God. All right, so this is the worshipping and the bowing down of Joseph. All right, when Joseph has his brothers and all these the four and twenty elders and everybody bowing down, all right. The number twelve and the end here saying, "Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever." Amen. That's under twelve. Twelve. You push that together as three under our God. <clears throat> I haven't heard we have been it's it's pretty much pointing to you as being god if you can handle the word god you're gonna have to work on it you don't have to tell people you're god but you represent this first thing here and you're all by yourself here so now you're on your way with god now four let's see what the last this bunch here this uh starting with 13 this is all about worlds we're starting off with number 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence they came, which is this is all about. Remember, he's coming in, hey, hold on, wait before any of this happens. Let's get this stuff going. So there's more of the story. All right. So this right here in number four represents worlds. All right, in worlds, this starts with four. So it would stay like this. So, so who are these people with the white robes? And which they came from? Where'd they come from? 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Four, this is a five, so these this is about the body. These are people that came to who washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Can you see that? That's crazy. But this is where we go through our baptism. This is where the red is. All right, so you're going to have that color. Now we got 15 over here. We got, therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple that they sitteth on thrones shall dwell among them. This is the 15, and this is inside of us. They're going to dwell with us, and they, they're with us now, night and day, night and day. Right now, 16, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst no more. Now shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. This is a uh, seven. This is the Lord's day again. And so we're thinking, we think that, uh, that we're going to get fire and brimstones. But that doesn't happen to us. We're not going back to hell or anything like that. There's nothing terrible. When we get saved, it's a beautiful thing. And it's a homecoming. It's not uh, World War Three or the end of the world. Not really, but when you get here, this is, that's the end of the old world. But they're just telling about us in the story. Something still has to happen. I think when we get into eight, Got to, that's when they start killing things, you know, start start smashing 
whatever this is and whatever that is. But I haven't gone ahead and read ahead of us, but we could. But right now, we say that when we finally make it over here to 16, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst. All right. Hunger means that we'll be fed correctly, and the thirst is that we've got fresh water now coming into us. And, and this is all because of the Lamb of God, and that is the person who is sitting in the middle that all these people, the, it's the person who's taken us on this journey, who the individual is who has taken this journey. It's all of his brethren that are hanging out around him, serving him, do, making your mind now most important. And let's see what down here in the seven, what is going to happen down here in 17. For the lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away the tears from their eyes. This is the, the solidifying. This is, this is the, I'm, this is mine. This is the idea that, for the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and lead them unto the fountains of waters. This this is no different here. When they say that any man that can open up the womb of God, womb the womb will become the Lamb of God. That's how that would work, is that any man, any mind that can that can open this womb, which is God will be given something really beautiful, all right? Do, do, do. But anyway, so that's some taking a part of a story. And this is a better, this is a good thing. So, you know, I, I mean, I can't explain it more. And I, I can't see how, when it's explained this way, that that not, that even the most staunch is, you know what I mean? You can go do this yourself. I mean, this is this is it. And it has its own checks and balances. All right. It's really cool. <clears throat> and uh, over here on the side is, a, is, a, is, you know, it's a saying. It's one of Jesus' sayings. I want to do a lesson on it. So I may not mention it. But it's about that when the hand hits the plow, right? And, uh, and, and the person looks back that he's, he's no longer worthy to follow Jesus. So it, it follows in the same story as that, you know, let the dead bury the dead. When someone says, oh, you know, I'd love to come see, but my father died and I have to go and whatever. And he says, let the dead bury their dead. Drop all that. Come with me, you know, type of thing. So um, when God, Jesus tells us that his father's husband's husband, that means that he's, you know, he plants gardens, or he's a gardener or a farmer. And we find that um, that that there's no one to till the land in, in Adam and Eve's story, and so God makes Adam. And even with him, he needs a helper, and so then he creates Eve. And this is the idea that uh, the tilling of the ground has to be done and kept. And so this tilling of the ground is that, you know, that you're always going to be meditating and, and giving your thanks to God by connecting with him. And so what we find is that, um, uh, that Cain is the tiller of the soil and uh, this, his counterpart winds up being a keeper of his sheep. All right. And so we would see that one is, a, is the mind and the other one is a spiritual helper just as uh you know adam and eve and no different than than um jacob and rachel all right and they have their sons esau and jacob all right esau being red that's what adam means you know means red this is a red thing and esau Esau, if you could just understand, that sounds just like a, a, the noise that a donkey makes. So he's the person, you've got to be Esau first, and then we wind up being Jacob next, all right, who, who successfully goes, hangs out, and marries someone and something that goes about bringing him into excess, 
which is what you want. You've, these ideas of growing and getting larger and increasing is what God does to us. And of course, he's the, best, the, the, he's the servant of his older brother. So he becomes, would be Jesus later on. He's the one who, who, who come, brings back this beautiful bounty that enriches his brother. All right. So all of these stories, they just repeat themselves. You know, they just have a different way of telling the story. But what's woven inside them can never change. That's the point of what we are learning is that, you know, you can make what you want out of the letter, you know, get carried away, have a great time because it's meant for you to entertain yourself on. That's what the folly means, you know, and myrrh, that it becomes an entertainment. And, you know, and even though it's serious entertainment, you know, we take it for real, absolutely take it for real. And, you know, and it's, and it's meant to be taken for real. But just that easy, can you change your mind and say, oh, man, get mad at first and then get over it, you know. But uh, you'll see that it's all about gaining this higher consciousness. And only those people that can't gain this higher consciousness live in hell. All right. Welcome aboard. I love your company. And I love you. Thank you for coming.